Good afternoon, this is Dr. Rao. Let's take a look at an easy exercise dealing with interest capitalization. It's easy because it's just one year worth of calculation. So on Jan 1st, 2024, we began a construction project on a new manufacturing facility, and this is gonna be for our own use, which means it's a self-constructed asset. The building was completed in 2025. The only interest bearing debt the company has outstanding in 2024 was a long-term bond with book value of a of uh, ten million dollars and effective interest rate of eight percent. The construction expenditures during 2024 are as follows. So we have five hundred thousand on Jan first, March first six hundred thousand, July thirty first four hundred eighty thousand, September thirtieth. 600,000 and December 31st, 300,000. Now the easy part of the exercise is we are dealing with just one year worth of calculation. So they just are telling us what happened in 2024 and to capitalize the interest. So let's take a look at what we would need. We'd need the weighted average expenditure multiplied by weighted average interest rate. In this case, I just wrote interest rate when I multiply those, I'll get the interest to be capitalized. So why did I just write interest rate and not weighted average interest rate? Well, simple reason is there's only one loan that's outstanding, this $10 million with effective rate of 8%. So I'm going to use monies from this $10 million. So we're just concerned with that 8%. So that part is easy. And also the fact that we're just doing one year. So here are the... The only thing that we really need to pay attention to is the time period. I incurred $500,000 in expenditure. The minute I incur the expenditure, I can start accruing the interest, capitalizing the interest, I'm sorry. The interest capitalization for this 500 is for the full 12 months because it was January 1. We're going to do the entry at December 31st. So for the full year, I need that. So this calculation is relatively easy. It's 500,000. The second is, second expenditure was on March 1st. So how many months is it? March 1st through December 31st is 10 months. So I will be able to capitalize interest only on 10 months worth of this number, of the 600,000, which works out to 500,000. 600,000 times 10 over 12. We do the same thing for all the other expenditures over here. Now, we find out the appropriate fraction. This is the only challenge, if you were to call it a challenge, seeing how many months. Now, pay attention to the last one, December 31st. If I spend this money on December 31st, as they've told me, I cannot accrue any interest in this twenty year, in the year 2024 on this 300,000 that I spent because there's no time that has passed for me to accrue any interest. So with that said, let me just go ahead and do this. The extensions, that's fairly easy. Once I know what I'm doing, I can just copy and paste the formula down here. So my weighted average expenditure is 1.3 million. What's my actual expenditure? If you add up these three numbers, these numbers over here, let me just do the calculation here and show you. When I add up those numbers, the actual expenditure is 2,480,000. I'm not concerned about that number right now. What I'm concerned about is a weighted average. Weighted average expenditure multiplied by the appropriate interest rate, which is 8% in this case, is going to give me $108,000. Now, what was my actual interest? I have 10 million in loan. The interest rate is 8%. That's how much cash I'll have to pay, 8% on 10 million. So on December 31st, let's assume I'm making that payment. My journal entry is going to be cash credit. That's how much I'm paying the bondholders. It's a bond, uh, the liability. And that's going to be 10 million times 8%. So they don't care what we're doing with the money, how much we capitalize, et cetera. What they care about is they get the check in the mail. And that's what we're doing. Now, what we've said is 108,000, that amount, 108,000, I'm going to capitalize, which means the remainder is not capitalized. So what does that mean? Let's again get down to brass tacks and see. 
Remember, all of this comes down to your journal entry because that's then going to go into the accounts. So the 108,000 will be debited to building and the 692,000 is debited to interest expense. Otherwise, it would have been interest expense debit, cash credit for 800,000. Here we are saying all 800,000 is not going to be expensed. 108,000 is going into this new manufacturing facility, the new building. I'm going to add it to the cost of the building. This is how it flows through by way of journal entry. So before I can do this journal entry, the 108,000, I have to capitalize. I have to see how I'm going to capitalize. Working backwards again, what I need to do is calculate the weighted average expenditure. Next exercise, you'll see how to calculate weighted average interest rate. Here is just a weighted average expenditure times the interest rate because I have only one loan outstanding and I know what the interest rate is for that one loan. So with this, we'll end this video and move on to the next exercise.